one. Hello, hello, my let's keep it real people. I know I love my people. I love my people, but I'm so excited to have Dr. Ben on. I have to get right to his bio because I have so many questions and people, you're going to have to see him in Florida because I can't get to all the questions. That's just <laughs> it. Here we go. Dr. Ben was born and raised in South Dakota, where he owned and operated one of the largest chiropractic and wellness clinics in the United States. In the last 20 years, he has worked with businesses, churches, corporations of all sizes, and created unmatched corporate wellness programs, authored two books, launched the five-star rated podcast, Designed to Heal, Louise Hayes would be happy, all right, and opened his clinic in Central Florida, where he currently practices and sees hundreds of patients every week. Dr. Ben currently resides in Orlando, Florida. With, see, you have another excuse to go down there with his wife, Megan, and two children, Jack and Grace. He's committed to educating, empowering individuals on how to apply vitalistic model of healthcare to their lives and live well. Dr. Ben's in the house. Woo -hoo! <laughs> You're awesome. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay. You get to pick one word. Okay. One word that best describes your past 30 days, whatever pops into your head and why'd you pick it? Good, bad, or ugly. Well, I'm just going to, your show's called keep it real right yeah whatever uh, yeah so so i feel a little bit embarrassed to say this but uh actually what came to mind was <laughs> was pissed off but i probably shouldn't Ooh. say that but uh but there's a lot they going on worse. yeah <laughs> um you know i i you know being in healthcare and seeing people and, and taking care of patients what i don't mean um i often say this to other doctors if i'm talking with them like if you ever find yourself being mad at the patient that's your problem it's not them that's not what i'm referring to what I mm. get upset about is is when I see people being lied to and when you see people being told things regarding their health and healing, um, it really, you know, I've heard the term, maybe a better word, maybe a little more appropriate. It's called uh, is com compassionate, right? I'm compassionate, but I'm pissed off because these things that people are told, they end up believing them to be true and then they make decisions based on that and it hurts them. And then they end up in a place they never wanted to be because of false information. And so um, I'm still a pretty happy guy and I love uh, what I do, but that's just, I'm just shooting straight. That's what came to mind. So hopefully I won't be too angry today on the show. You don't seem angry. You seem yeah. exactly what you said, passionate. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Like there are people that come on and go, whoa, that's a curmudgeon. <laughs> All right. You know, you're carrying that around. But yeah. I learned a while ago, it's okay to get angry for a good cause because that's how mm. change comes about. Mm. You know, if you yeah. just complacent, yeah, there's a difference though. I mean, you really care about your patients, mm. and mm. I've I've been down that road where mm. so many. I'll tell you, yeah, well-meaning. Can we go with well-meaning? Okay, I had an issue with my neck and ended up being nerves and you know, mm -hmm. spurs in my neck, but they didn't know what it was. So I had all these things on my head, my brain and everything worked out well, but so many well-meaning family members when mm -hmm. I was in such pain, wanted me to take horrible medicine that I would not put in my body. Mm -hmm. And their doctors were trying to say, no, she's got to take this. I'm like, no, I know it's not that. I know it's not that. Thank yeah. God I got to a healer similar to you, but they were so mad at me that they even went the route and said, how could you not care about your family? Mm. I was like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So convinced that this medicine that I know mm. is destroying people. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And yeah, wow. all the medical system was agreeing with it. And then I found this amazing, amazing, just uh, my family practitioner who was also an osteopathic. goes, mm. Yeah. I'm gonna send you to this woman, and boom, she knew. The job, boom, mm. boom, boom, was after months, six months of hell. Wow. wow. And see, I think I, my biggest question is, yeah, Doctor Ben, I didn't even know how to explain it to the family. I didn't even know, mm. and I got a lot of people that wrote in and said the same thing. Their their family thinks they're cuckoo for cocoa puffs, and they don't even know where to send them. Mm. So to say. No, you you got to trust me. So that was, and I know mm. it's a big question, but when yeah. you're hit with this information and you're like, mm, there's got to be another way. Yeah. Where do you even send your family? Because you know what it's like. People are stubborn. You you really can't convince mm. them of anything. Yeah, I mean, you. I know, I I know you have 
been in this space for a long time. And so I know you have, you have wisdom, you have, a, you have a deep understanding, right? As you should, you've been in it a long time, right? Um, well, and so I, I take time tuning into my body. And I also believe there's something bigger out there. Yeah. Than, and everything yeah. happening has a reason. And if I listen to my body, it does want to heal itself. And I'm, yes. I'm the one blocking it and normally stubborn, like, no, I got this. I got this. And then it's like, okay, well, let me know when you don't. Uh, uh, we're all here. We'll send you to the right person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're so that's funny. my take. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, and, but, but to your, but to your point, right. And, and there's a lot of maybe just little, you know, sayings and cliches, right. I mean, you know, uh, truth sounds like hate to people that hate the truth. You know, the student is, you know, the teacher appears when the, when the student is ready. I mean, there's, you know, Jesus wasn't a healer in his own town. I mean, we've heard these, the, we understand these realities. You know, I, I'll just speak from my own personal experience. Even though I've done this 20 years, 20,000 patients, traveled the globe, had multiple clinics. Like, for example, I'm just shooting straight here. Like, I haven't, I haven't talked, I haven't, I haven't been allowed in my stepfather's house for over three years because myself and my family refused to get the COVID jab. Okay. Um, so, so like, I'm sorry. Like I, you know, like what, you know, what do you do with that? I have certain principles that I live my life by and I can love these people and they're my family and they're my friends. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes those are the hardest. When I went back and practiced my first practice in South Dakota, it was in my hometown. And, you know, these are the same people that changed my diapers and, you know, watch me be a knucklehead and make poor choices. Then I come back this, you know, quote doctor and they are like, Hey man, what, you know, why do we need to, why should we listen to you now? Now, I would say that over those years, just your conviction, you know, I, I used to have a lot of battles. Like I used to fight, you know, just a lot of that. I, I would say I choose my battles now. A lot of it is like you, like, like you started your, your show, you know, years and years and years ago. Um, the podcast for us is the same thing designed to heal. I bring experts on like you and others to say, Hey, let's talk about this. Cause some people say, Oh, you're a crazy chiropractor. I don't want to take it from you. Okay, great. I'll bring on a cardiologist then to talk about it. Fine. I'll bring on a, you know, I'll bring on a whatever. I don't. I'll bring on a medical doctor to talk about this. I'll yeah. bring on. It doesn't matter. I try to find yeah. those those people that they will listen to. Now, the reality is, some just won't. Some mm -hmm. just won't, and that's hard. Right before we stopped on this stepped on this call, I was literally meeting with one of my staff members about a patient that she just really want, worried about and wants to be able to help. And and I said, I don't know if she'll let us. Like I I want to help her too, mm -hmm. but what you know, there's there's you know, it takes two to tango. And so I would say, but here's what I've found. This is the way I'll, I'll maybe, I don't want to say close it, but just kind of kick it back to you yeah. and see what you think. But what I have found is we will oftentimes let those people, like you were describing, the naysayers yeah. or the questioners yeah. or... Well, meaning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and we'll let them, we'll actually let them have more influence on our lives. Like their doubt will make us be like, oh gosh, now you're a strong cup of coffee, right? So you would maybe weren't swayed by that. Okay. But many people are, well, yeah. I, I got the you know jab because my uncle said I couldn't come over or whatever, or I, well, I took the pills. I had a, I had a patient. I'm going to share this story. I had a patient, one of the sweetest, lovely women I ever knew who she was diagnosed with cancer and she wanted to take the uh, holistic route. Okay. And everybody in her family was against her. Um, I mean, some of the most horrible things you would ever imagine family members would say to her, right? Um, yeah. From, yeah. I mean, just unspeakable things. And even though she wanted to do a holistic route, they told her, kind of reminded me what you said, like, you're a horrible person to your family, to your kids, that you won't do the, you know, the traditional route. So yeah. she, um, so honestly, she gave in to them and she did the traditional route and it murdered her. It killed her so fast. One of the actual chemotherapy drugs they use, they actually call it, this is their own words. Like I couldn't believe that they said this. They call it the red devil. That's the name of this one particular chemotherapy because it's actually red when they drip it into you. It's called the red wow. devil. And I said, are you kidding me? Like I would never want to be dripping the red devil in me at all, ever. And so, um, and, I, and part of it, and I know this is a little bit too much for some people, but I just feel like, you know, she went so against what she knew to be true. Yeah. That yeah. It, that's, I think that's what, you know, and I'm being strong here, Sandy, but I think that's what killed her, right? Was, yeah. 
was that that thing. You have to listen to that still small voice. You have to listen to that intuition. When you know that something is right and true, right? No matter what, they can be your best friend. You can be, I remember hearing this one time, you can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong, okay? So you can have a whole bunch of well-intentioned, nice people that you go to church with, and they can be absolutely dead wrong about that, all right? And so I, I'm with you. I mean, I'm so far removed from the traditional medical model because they do not have what I'm interested in. Um, mm-hmm. It's not how I approach my health. That's not how I approach my care. And, and that's okay. And I don't have any guilt about yeah. that. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, you know, you know, do what you want. But like for those people like you yeah. that are like, that's not how I roll. I don't want to mask my pain with some toxic chemical. And so like, you know, peace out. But I'm always fascinated that just again, to close this, that other people feel like they have the right to tell me that. Like they got so, you know, they're so adamant that you need to take that poison. I'm like, yeah. why do you, yeah. why yeah. do you really care? <laughs> but anyway, you know, I, I have, well, I think everyone's different, Yeah. but I have some theories in that it has to do with their own fears. It has nothing yes. to do with me, you know, totally to do with me. It's their, their own fears and the way I combat it. And it just works for me. I, I, I said, Oh my God. I didn't know how much you really loved me and cared about me. <laughs> and I so appreciate that, but I'm still not going to do it. But uh, and a few stuff like pop their nose and go, but I really love you. And I yeah, just yeah. Want more, but I just keep saying, I'm not probably going to do that, but I love you. And But that's I- so interesting. You, you, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think it, it confronts so many people's own fear when yep. you say no, like when I, whatever, pick anything, you know, you're, I don't want any traditional yep. medical advice. They can't, fa- like you saying that rattles them so much because they, then it makes them almost question their fear or whatever the scenario is, right? Like, I can't believe yeah. you wouldn't do that. You're like, that's, that's great that you can. I don't know. I can't imagine that you would. Like, what do we want to do now? Where do we go from here? Yeah. Right? Like, I love you, I, but. You know, you know, what's funny is I don't get it because I, that's why I love this podcast. I have people on Dr. Ben that have totally different views than me. Yeah. And yeah. as long as they're not coming from hate, mm-hmm. yeah, I listen come on. to them. Yeah. I go, okay, I never thought of it that way. That's not probably what I'm going to do, but I appreciate that. So I don't, I don't get it because I cannot tell you how many times I changed my mind after listening mm-hmm. to people. Like I truly want to hear what they have to say. Okay. So we got to get in this, this, this right. big fear. Because the second biggest question is, and I'm sure you hear it all the time, I don't know how to find the right chiropractor. Oh, okay. And so many people have written that to me and said, I visit one, I'll be in one state where I live and the person will be amazing. And then I Mm. think, okay, they're a chiropractor. They're all amazing. And they're not. Mm. And how do they go about making sure yeah, you know, is the right person for them, and their intentions are pure, just like medical doctors. Just because you're a chiropractor doesn't mean it's just like a doctor; they're all yeah. over the place. Yeah, and I didn't, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, I'll do my best. I mean, I have, I have a simple thought, and you know that I, that I coach most people on because, yeah, I mean, I find, I have to find doctors for patients all the time. I'm in Florida, right? So they come down here yeah. for a while, then they go back up where you live and go back, and you know, we find them doctors. Um, so I do my best. The but I would say this, it starts with a couple of things. It starts with you knowing what kind of doctor you're looking for. Okay. So, uh, meaning what I might think is a great chiropractor, you might not think is a great chiropractor. I really am a firm believer in wellness care, seeing your chiropractor regularly. All right. Not just when you're in pain. So you might be somebody that goes, no, Hey, I just want to know somebody that go in and I get my back cracked a couple of times when it hurts. And then I'm on my way and I want them to take my insurance. Like that might be your model of care. So, so, so just know what you're looking for. All right. And then really, and, and honestly, be able to articulate that. Like, Hey, I'm looking for somebody that just, when I'm really hurt and I can get in there and, you know, covered by my insurance. Okay, great. Now you might say, no, I'm more of a holistic mind and I want them to have an understanding of lifestyle and maybe nutrition, maybe detox again, whatever it is. And I want to be able to bring my family there. And I want to be able to do it more as a wellness approach. Then I'm, then what does that look like? And then once you have identified what that looks like, then Here's what I tell people. Start asking your friends, people that you love, people that you hang with that are probably like-minded, who do they go to? Who do they see? Like the best 
the best of that is often a referral, right? So we are, you know, we're a very busy office. We see a lot of people. I don't do any advertising. It's all through my, it's all through my patients because of what we're talking about right now, right? My patients know, Hey, I'm a, I mean, I'm a faith-based guy in my office. I pray for my patients. I play worship music. Like some people would hate that, right? Like not that they maybe hate me, but like, they would be like, dude, you're a, freak okay yeah. but What's those, going on here? Yeah, but the people that that that's a big value for them yeah they love it yeah. okay they could come in and they can have me pray for them and adjust them and be loved on and go on their way well like for them that's beautiful okay but now again so but but how do i advertise that like i'm not going to put an ad up that says you know i love jesus come to my office right like that's going to be a little weird for people so my point in saying that is if you're looking for a great chiropractor now I have, I have a bias. All right. I think that you should use chiropractic or, or holistic healthcare. True healthcare yeah. is, is wellness based. Right. I mean, I know some of your background, like, come on, we got to take care of this thing. Like, if you're just waiting to get sick. So some of it, you might need to challenge your own view of healthcare, right? Like you may have, this person might say, Hey, I don't like the traditional medical approach. Hey, I'm with you, but don't, but don't then just almost go to the wellness model and utilize it the same way you probably use medical care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's a whole different paradigm. And so there is, I find that people that start getting into holistic healthcare, naturopaths or chiropractors or osteopaths or acupuncture or whatever you're kind of, or all of it, whatever you like. Um, yeah. And then another thing I would maybe just tell people as an encouragement is this probably, and you might even have this written down. The second question I get a lot is like, well, I can't afford it, right? Or some version of that, right? It's expensive or things like that. The thing that I love about, about wellness care and prevention care, honestly, is um, so much of self-care is stuff you do on your own, right? Like so much of, of health care and healing is, is, doesn't cost a lot and you do it yourself. And so I don't ever want a person to feel like, just because I can't see you, Dr. Ben, or I can't find a good chiropractor, and I'm with you, I want a good chiropractor too. But if you can't, that doesn't mean like you're destined to like, a life of suffering. You know what I mean? Like still be hopeful. There's a lot. And now with, with virtual, right. You can get your hands on great doctors and I refer to doctors virtually all over the place. And so, yeah, you might not be able to get your hands, you know, get your hand, you know, get adjusted yeah, yeah. physically, but there's still a ton that you can do. So I don't know if that answers your question, Sandy. But... It, does. it does. It does. And I think the biggest point that I'm getting from it, Dr. Ben is be clear on first what you want. And yeah, because I did the same thing when I was searching and people want to tell you, oh my God, go see, you know, Dr. Betty, yeah. go see Dr. Bill. And they can't wait, you know, but make sure you know what you want in it first. Yeah. And I'm very fortunate in that <clears throat> most of them, like the ones that I know are really good, they do take insurance. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. yeah so it, yeah. it, it doesn't affect that. Okay. Now. I'm going to skip some of these things because we've never had it on. Yeah. And I'm going to call it the O jug. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. I want to go into it because no one's ever touched it. Mm. I've been like, hold the brakes, mm. everybody. Hold the brakes. Mm. If mm. anybody of my clients or anyone's on it, they would lie through their teeth. They wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Oh, you have the same problem oh, that I do. Like people oh, come into me. a little drastic. I mean, something going on here. No, Sandy. I'm like, okay, all right. People are so funny. Like, you know, when, when in my world and probably your world, like people will come into me because they know how I personally feel about these things. So yeah. they'll be like, Dr. Ben, I, I took an aspirin last night. And I'm like, I'm not your like priest. You don't have to confess to me. Like, I don't, if you choose to take drugs, I don't care, <laughs> but like, it's, it is funny. So then they, yeah, I think you're right. They just lie to you. They're like, Oh no, I didn't take anything. That's so funny that you say that. But so anyhow, yeah. Tell me, tell me about this diabetes drug. I mean, you mm, know. Mm. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think a lot of things, if you are, so if you, if you're a person that listens to a show like yours, you're obviously not afraid to just shoot straight. All right. I will, um, gladly go on the record and tell you can, you can kind of like, you know, uh, you know, timestamp this right now. Uh, Ozempic will go down as one of the worst drugs that we ever, ever allowed to market. There will be class action lawsuits. There will be massive 
lawsuits about how much it hurt people and killed people and damaged people and lied to people and how the science was fraudulent and the side effects they didn't tell us about. It's like if you, you know, if anybody that remembers Vioxx and Celebrex and, you know, these drugs that, you know, stroked out and killed in heart attacks over, you know, 60 to 120,000 people that they knew about. I mean, this has always been the case now. And but the, but you have to be on your guard right now with Ozempic. They are really using some crazy language and and they are they're going after the wellness mindset, right? Like they're they're, they're so it sounds like if I was hadn't done the work I've done, or maybe like you like you said, like your yours, you know, your you know, litmus, you know, your alarms go off when you hurt it, right? Because you just know enough about physiology to know this isn't how we're gonna do this. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. Do you remember, uh, Sandy, do you remember um Olestra, remember when they the, the oh my fat, god yes right yes. with uh they were it was an undigestible fat right and so they you know they'd cook your potato chips in this undigestible fat and then just not to get too graphic but everybody was you know crapping themselves and uh they're like hey literally. this is weird and yeah, yeah. literally because it was you know because it's it wasn't food the body was going this isn't for yeah. me and so eventually of course quickly actually got taken off the market because people didn't like to eat their chips and have to wear a diaper so when you look at Ozempic, it does some crazy things. And, and here you have a drug approved for diabetes, but now they're saying it's cardiovascular protective. Now they're saying that it, they literally are, they're called them now. I just saw this article the other day, Ozempic babies that are calling it, right? Because um, they're, they're saying that women, it's helping them get pregnant. And you're going to continue to see all these off-label drug uses. But some of the statistics, I mean, paralyzing of the stomach. All right. Which, by the way, they're saying doesn't recover when you get off of the drug. The drug is about a thousand dollars a month. Now you say, oh, well, it's covered by my insurance. Well, you've my friends, somebody's going to pay for that. Like you can't have. And you're by the way, their own definition. You are expected to be on this drug forever for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life. That's a good business get, model. Yeah, it's a good business model. It's bad for your health. So if you think you're going to take that drug forever. And, and, and then, by the way, why do they say forever? Because they say if you stop it, the weight just comes back. Matter of fact, it comes back worse, and it's destroyed your metabolism. It's increased risk of things like thyroid cancer. I know so many, I mean, women, so many women nowadays struggle with their thyroid anyway, right? And now you have an increased risk of thyroid cancer. Uh, it affects the electrical impulses of your heart. I mean, it's, it, and this is just the stuff that they, that they ever are allowing you to, to hear about, okay? Yeah. And so it, 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 most of the weight loss is actually coming from eating away your muscles. It's not even eating away at your fat. And that's why people get off the drugs. They're actually sicker long-term because it's your lean muscle mass that actually is part of your metabolism. So people not only are gaining the weight back, but they're worse. They're less healthy. But don't worry because there's another drug that just came out of the UK that they're saying that they call it the exercise pill. And that's supposed to slow down your um, muscle loss. So and I'm joking, of course, I'm being facetious, not about the pill. They're calling it that. And so what you're finding, if you really like, and I mean, your listeners are smart. You say you love your, you love your tribe. You love your family, you know, that yeah. listens to this. And I feel the same way. And here's what I would tell my, here's what I tell my listeners on my show. And I've done several episodes on, on Ozempic. Like if okay. you are like, yeah, like, well, so they can go, and I brought on, yeah, I brought on some doctors and we've talked through this, but like, like you're smarter than this people. Like you're smarter than this. Don't fall for this. You're smarter than this. Okay. There's not a way God did not forget the Ozempic. All right. We're, let me give you another statistic. The United States obesity rate is, I believe at 43%, 42.6 or 43%. The obesity rate in Japan is 4%. 4%. Okay, so 43% versus 4%? Like, this isn't some genetic difference in, 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 and by the way, let me, I'll make it worse. The American Pediatric, Pediatric Association just came out and said that our first line of defense for obesity in children should be these medications. That's criminal. A first line of defense? So the first line of defense is your fork. The first line of defense is, are you moving your body? All right, if we're gonna just throw our hands up in the air and think that we are gonna take a pill of diabetes drug, okay? And, and because that can, you know, make your body seemingly lose weight on a fairly rapid mm. succession, you know, like if, if, if you really, I know we want to believe that because it takes the responsibility off of us and we can just pop a pill. Like, but you, if I would have told you this, you know, 20 years ago, like humanity, they would have said, 
that's crazy. Like you can't take a pill, eat whatever you want. Now, of course they do lip service. Well, you should exercise. I had a woman, I'll tell you one last story. And this is, so I have a woman and she's a patient. She's a beautiful, yeah. one of my, you know, beautiful patient. And she's a pretty high level executive at a hospital system in town. Okay. Oh. And she's cool and she's holistic and all that kind of stuff. But you know, she works in that model. Okay. And so she got bamboozled into, t- I mean, I say it's bamboozled. I mean, she decided to start taking those empaths. I mean, I think bamboozled. I mean, I was surprised she decided to do it. So, yeah. and she knows where I stand. And I'm like, hey, I wouldn't do that. And I gave her the stuff. And she kind of said, well, I'm just going to do it and see how it goes. So she's pretty, uh, she gets her blood work all the time. Like she's pretty consistent. She, you know, she's in the system. So she has access to it a lot. So she comes in about a month ago, holding her phone with her labs. Okay. And it's, she has, you know, like on Quest, when you can see like your history, like it shows where the yeah, labs yeah. were at, right? So we're looking at it and all of a sudden, normal, 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 normal for years, all of a sudden her liver enzymes off the roof, like, like through the roof, like, like had to meet with an endocrinologist, like, is your liver shutting down? Okay. And, and then another, a couple some of her other, it totally disrupted her endocrine system from taking that dang drug. Okay, so what you think is happening is not what's happening. It's not helping you lose weight. It's eating away your body, paralyzing your stomach muscles, destroying normal endocrine and physiology in your body, and it's going to leave you worse off. Now, you might say, oh, yeah, but obesity is a risk. Well, I'm again, I need you to understand this. But you don't take yourself out of that risk just because you lost weight artificially. It's like taking cholesterol drugs. You may say, hey, I lowered my cholesterol by taking a statin drug. The problem is that doesn't do what you think it did. Dr. John Abramson out of Harvard, he says dying with lower cholesterol is not a successful outcome. Just because they can go in and lower your, your level of cholesterol on a freaking blood test and then say, oh yeah, that's good news. But then you die of a heart attack anyways. Most people that die of Heart attacks have normal cholesterol. This isn't the problem. High cholesterol is not our problem of heart disease. We've been taking more drugs than we've ever taken in our life. It's still been the number one cause of death since the 1970s. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. Like, if that worked, we should be having decreases of it. But it's higher than ever. And so when I, when I talk to people, this is why there's no hack to health. There's no hack to healing, right? If you want to have a healthy relationship in your, your marriage or with your children, like, there's no shortcut than investing in that relationship, right? You just don't have it just because it's Tuesday, right? You have it because you invest in it. The way you have good health is by doing what it takes to have good health, all right? Now, I'm not trying to fat shame people or sound like a jerk on here. I'm I'm just calling us to reason, okay? You cannot medicate yourself to health. You're not going to take these GLP-1 you know, antagonists and get yourself healthy. And the sooner you, 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 you know, you've been around for a while, right? So you probably remember Dexatrim. Remember Dexatrim? Remember, yes, right? Of you know, yeah, Fedra, these uh, these uh, medications. And then what happened? That was on the that, that drug was on the market for 22 years before they pulled it because it was destroying heart valves. Okay, and that's what it did. It destroyed heart yeah. valves, and we go, oh my gosh, what the heck? All right. So now, so this is going to happen to Ozempic. They are going to, and all, we'll, we'll get we'll Gavi and all these other, you know, ones, these offshoots of them. And so just mark yeah. my words. Now, now there, that doesn't mean that you're hopeless. That doesn't mean that there's not things that you can be do. Just pills aren't going to do it. And, um, and so I couldn't, I, I can't. And now listen, but the last thing I'll say, there is a wild propaganda machine behind this. The, the, um, the Sandovi, the group that made this drug out of the UK, they are already, they are already currently the wealthiest business in Europe already now because of this drug. Okay. There is major, as you start reading the articles, you can, we all know here in the US that pharma owns advertisement and they've owned that. So they're always positive. It's always going to be spun. Oprah tells you to take it. Weight Watchers has adopted it that says it's good. I saw an article from a natural health doctor the other day that was frustrating to see him endorsing it. All right. And so there's propaganda behind this. So they're going to make it sound like it's the second coming. Right. I mean, when they first came out with the COVID jab, they said they told you it was 100 percent safe and effective. 
All right. Now, the study out of Cleveland Clinic has said that the people that, that they actually said now it has negative efficacy, which means the more jabs you've gotten, the increased chance you have at getting COVID. So not only were they not safe and effective, they were dangerous and ineffective. OK, now, but but in the beginning, there was a whole propaganda machine to tell you how that they're the second coming and they're how amazing and they were made by angel tears. OK, right. And so you got to wake up to this. I know it's uncomfortable. But we have to wake up to it or you're just going to be lullaby to sleep and say, well, I saw it on the news and Uncle Bob said it's nice. And my friend Lisa took it and she lost weight and she looks great. And here's, you know, and I'm saying, like, come on, people like we're smarter than this. Seriously, seriously, come on. And so um, I know I get a little fired up, but I love like, it. I love it. I love and, 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 and Sandy, I would say this. If you don't believe me or you think I'm a little too intense, go read the insert of Ozempic. Go read it. Go read the side effects and go through it. And I assure you, you will not take it. it you just won't. I did a, a seminar on this a few months ago and I told exactly what I did. I just put up the drug insert and I just went through the whole thing and read it. And people are always shocked, right? They can't believe it. And, um, and so uh, don't take my word for it. I mean, I'm happy to, but yeah, if you go to my, if you do go to ours, uh, our design to heal, I've done a few episodes on this just because so many people are taking it. We needed to speak on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, my, my son, who's a freshman in college and he has his YouTube favorites and mm, I mm. think it had to be over a year ago, a while ago. He's like, mom, this drug is going to get really popular and mm. I want you to be aware of it for your clients. And it was a convention for doctors. Oh bow ozempic and this other doctor snuck on to tell oh, you wow. no really? no and he was going through all the stuff that you weren't going to know and yeah. then i never saw it again on youtube wow that episode but it was like we're talking like a year and a half ago good on that doctor man yeah and it was in like i'm never forget it was in vegas or something and it was at a convention and this guy's going like what are the benefits he's like um i don't think you want to interview me that's not why i'm here wow and i thought i knew it like he <laughs> i mean no, i should say that your spidey senses went off yeah no, right i just i never want to downplay it and i i love oprah so you know i'm all about yeah, it yeah 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 but something <laughs> like Come on, people. Come yeah. on. We, we know there's no magic bean. Come yeah. on. Everything has side effects. Even, even the drugs that I've seen really help people, and there is no other choice. And I think, okay, okay. There's still a side effect. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean even thyroid medication, even insulin. Like, these are, we understand. But, like, let's just not be Pollyanna. Like, let's yeah. understand and say there's trade-offs, and you can still make the adult decision to say, but, but I always talk about really to me, uh, it's, you know, Sandy, I just call it informed consent. I just think you should know, you should know yeah. that. Don't yeah. tell me, oh no, it's not this or, oh no, or, Hey, don't worry about it. No, I'm going to, I'll decide if I'm going to worry about it. I'll decide if that's a risk we're taking for me. Um, not your propaganda. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this about drug studies. Um, we, we did a, an event the other day on uh, talking a lot about mental health, you know, studies and, you know, so antidepressant medications, ADD medications, these type of stuff, right? And you're seeing this mental health crisis that we're oh, in. I would be interested in that. And so, yeah, well, it was great. And, it, and I mean, I thought it was great. I'm biased. But, um, but what, what a lot of people didn't realize is this little kind of tidbit that I'll share. Um, most studies that are done don't ever make it to the light of day if they don't show what they wanted it to show. Okay, I think a lot of it, so that's called like publishing bias. Like a lot of people don't realize, they just assume like if, if a study's done, the results get published and that's how we decide if it's worth, yeah. Yeah. worth taking it. So one of the studies, for example, was on Prozac and th 13 out of the 15, I think it was 13 or 12, I don't remember, 13 out of the 15 studies showed the placebo performed better than the drug. 13 out of 15. Those wow. studies, those studies never got published. Okay. The ones that they published are the two or three that said, oh yeah, it was a little better than placebo. And so, but see, if you don't know that and how could you, like, who's going to, right? Like you're not, in, you're not, who's got the yeah. time to assume that they lied to me now, but it's gotten to that point almost where you have to almost assume 
you have to start from a place of skepticism. And I hate to say that, right? But you I'm have to realize saying. by the by the first time you're seeing that, and they're saying, if they're saying this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it's a pharma pharmaceutical companies are the most fine, the most fraudulent businesses in the history of America. I mean, they're the they're the number one least trusted on the latest poll of professions. You know, I mean, we all understand this. I mean, like we, you know, we know we we laugh about it. We know that they spend the most money on lobbyists, lobbying Congress. They responsible for seventy five percent of the uh, funding of, of of television ads and things like that. There's only two countries in the world that allow direct to consumer advertising for drugs: the United States and New Zealand. Like it's why we're all drug addicts in this country. We take we're five percent of the population of the world. We consume about sixty to seventy percent of all the medications. We take ninety percent of the oxycontin. Like like this is like this is of the world. Like, so is the whole rest of the world just rolling around in the grass suffering or did they maybe find another way to deal with this? And so, but again, if you just, if you don't want to think about it because it challenges your brain too much because you're like, oh man, that hurts me to believe that, you know, that we can't trust our agencies, we, you know, the alphabet agencies out there yeah. anymore. Like yeah. I get it. Like I'm, I'm in the same boat. It breaks my heart too, but I'm, but what are we going to do? Like, we just going to like, you know, we can't just keep going along with it. And so, um, it's, it's a destabilizing conclusion to come to for a little bit, right? Like you saw a lot of people kind of through the pandemic kind of come come out of that going, man, things are not as I thought they were. And yeah. it's a hard place to be for a while. You learn some things about yourself. You learn some things about other places that you trusted. And it is a real wake-up call. But that doesn't mean that it can also be beautiful. Like it can be an awakening. It can be, you know, empowering. Yeah. yeah. And I agree. I don't. I don't, I like to trust people and they all have my best interest at heart, but I think skepticism is healthy. I really do. I really do. Yeah. Especially yeah. when it comes to what you're putting in your body. All right. So they want to know, do you give your patients individually or overall recommend what they should be eating or workout plans? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. It's part of what we do. So I'm, I kind of fall into that category of a lifestyle doctor. I mean, I've just done this a long time. So we focus a lot. I mean, <clears throat> Secretary Tommy Thompson back in the day, he said that this was his words, not mine. But he said, you know, 90% uh, of diseases are diseases for dummies. And what he meant was it's the things we do to ourselves. All right. So to me, if I'm going to call myself a doctor of any sort and, and practice healthcare, I think it's my responsibility to teach the things that, you know, cause disease. All right. Sure. Yeah. This posture and the spine and, and nerves is part of it. Uh, but so is what we feed ourselves. So is how we sleep. And, and some of the things I, I didn't have to teach on as much 20, 20 years ago, I didn't have to talk about cell phones because we didn't, not everybody, you know, had them. Now I look out my office and everybody's bent over looking at their phones. I got to interrupt people off their phones to adjust them sometimes. Right. It's crazy. But yeah. um, so, so I absolutely teach that. Now I would say I am, even though I'm hard on, on, on traditional medicine, or you know, I don't even like that term, allopathic medicine, Western medicine, I'm pretty hard on it. I'm also fairly um, hard on holistic healthcare. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, you don't have to do 300 supplements to be healthy. You know what I mean? You don't have to do 8 million tests to be healthy. Like, like do the basics. So most of my teaching is the basics. Like what exercise plan should I do? Well, I'll give you some stuff, but like mostly just move. I don't care if you like rollerblading, playing basketball, going on long walks on the beach with your puppy dog, move your body. You don't have to join a gym if you don't want to. Sure, join one if you need accountability or you like, you know, aerobics like. class. Yeah, yeah, but just move. So when it comes to eating, people are like, oh, you do keto, do you do, you know, carnivore, do you do Atkins, do you do vegan, do you do? And I'm like, listen. All of it, yeah, I kind of see your face. I'm like, all of it's better than the standard American diet, okay, for the most part, right? So, like, stop living on junk. That's a good start, right? So, that because a lot of people say, well, I, like, a lot of those diets work, and it's certainly, now, I have some doctor opinions on some of those things, all right? But, like, ultimately, my first choice is, like, what are you currently doing? If you're living at the gas station and living on Mountain Dews and Ho-Hos, like, let's start there, and then let's get into some of the nuances. And when I, I mean, I worked at the Olympic athletes. I went to the 2012 Olympics as the chiropractor for USA Wrestling, USA Weightlifting, USA Judo. I was an elite athlete myself for uh, was training for the 96 Olympics as a boxer. So like I get the high end elite, you know, every molecule going into your body and, and that's fine. I'm confident to talk that level. 
but like that's not what most people need you know what i mean like most of us are just trying to like get through the day and let's get rid of the the, the ultra processed foods let's understand some of the basics let's get rid of the artificial sweeteners let's get some rest get some sunshine take our shoes off you know you know yeah. love some people get loved by other people and it's amazing so so i guess the answer is i teach all that stuff and we do a lot of it that's why i do my just you know that's why i do my podcast because some of these deserve longer conversations right like some Absolutely. people say they say, oh, just tell me what to eat. And I'm like, listen, I don't want to just tell you what to eat. I want you to understand what your body needs. Then you'll just do it, right? Yes. And so, or not, it still requires, you know, habits and things like that. But, um, and, and a lot of people will say, oh, you always just talk about how bad it is. And I'm like, well, listen, sometimes I have to, I have to scare you about Ozempic because if I don't, you're going to fall for the fancy commercials, you know, running through the sand and the pre and post picture. So yeah, I have to talk about the bad side because there's so much time and energy invested in to try to get you to not think about the risks of it. And right. And so, um, you know, ultra processed food, processed food is really bad for your body. It's toxic. All right. You can eat it. There's no law against it, but I don't want you to eat it. Not thinking it's a big deal. Now you have high blood pressure. Now your thyroid's messed up. Now you have allergies and you, and you come to me and you're like, you know, what should I take for that? I'm like, what should you take for it? What you need to do is stop poisoning yourself. Right. Um, now, again, is it always that simple, Sandy? No, no but you know what no. I mean, right? Like, but like, let's start there. So I hope you, you just, you're asking me all these trigger questions. <laughs> well, you have to understand throughout the years, and I love it. Yeah. I've had, and we're talking, highly educated, yeah. well known peeps out there. Yeah. And they're only carnivores. Mm-hmm. Or they're only vegans and they're only vegetarian and they'll go through the whole thing and it blows your mind. And I would say to them, listen, people, no. here's the deal. You're going to McDonald's every other day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, a six pack of beer a night, you know? Yeah. And yeah. vitamins and all that. And you're worried <laughs> about. I'm only going to eat green juice yeah, powders be, that are organic because I can't trust the soil for my veggies. To me, it's like, okay, okay, yeah. maybe, maybe, like what, if, you know, what's going maybe. on? You know, when my, when my dad had stage four cancer and he was given two weeks to live and I took him to a holistic cancer center in Arizona and I watched my dad who had so many tumors in his body, they stopped counting. I watched him become cancer free in 21 days. All right. What the heck? And, and, You're gonna throw that in at the end of well, the show. Here, well, here, well, here's why I say this. I say this because in that circumstance, we did some very high end holistic protocols. Okay, and so yes, my dad needed IVs and he needed green juice, you know, yeah. and, and coffee enemas and yeah. lymph drainage and detox protocols and I mean all the stuff. Exactly because he was in a crisis with weeks to live. Okay. Yeah. And now because of that, so, but then what happens to your point is that gets extrapolated out into what you just described, which is Sally, who's, you know, eating gunk junk, but then she, you know, and I'm just saying like, let's like, I don't want you, the way you don't end up in that crisis and, and, you know, and by the way, that care was $60,000. And so people are going to say, well, I don't have $60,000. Awesome. Then, then you better be doing the basics today. Because sure, it's an amazing story, but the really amazing story would be that my dad wasn't an alcoholic for his whole life and he didn't live on junk food his whole life and he knew how to take care of his body and he didn't end up in a situation with stage four, you know, colon and bowel cancer. So like, we just have to reframe it. I tell some people, you know, like, um, you know, like the, you know, the paddles on the chest, right? The, the, the yeah. defibrillators, like, listen, that makes a sexy medical TV show or, or something like that, right? Like, like, oh, wow, paddles. But like the really, so it's sexy to see it and it's this life saving, but m- half of the people that, the, v- the first sign of a heart attack, majority of the time is the heart attack happening and half of those people die, okay? So that's, those are bad odds. If that's your plan to hope that you're close to a defib, right? And they chalk you back to, like, don't let that be your plan. Don't let that be your plan. The, the, the better thing would have been is somebody intervened 20, 30, 40 years before that taught you the basics of, you know, God's laws of health and healing. And then you just put those protocols in your life. You don't have to look for the hack. You don't have to look for the fad. Like 
you know, it's like plants in your house. Like it's not complicated. You put them by the window, you give them some water and some decent dirt, and they do a pretty good job of taking care of themselves. But we think health doesn't have to be as complicated as we've made it. Move your body, feed it some decent stuff, you know, yep. say your prayers, get some sun, you know, like the basics. But anyway. Oh, it's no, because my dad, and he wasn't, you know, a well educated person, but he would say to me, and forever. I just want to eat food that I know what's in it. Like he would mm. say that to me. Like, I don't want with all this stuff in it. And I'm not saying I shouldn't have sugar, but if I'm going to have something. I'm going to have a homemade piece of pot. Like that mm. was his philosophy. And he also ate a little bit of everything, you know, because he's like, I'm not sure what they, I remember saying, I'm not sure what they want me to eat anymore. So I'm yeah. gonna, was, and he was healthy. Like I'm going to eat a little bit of everything eggs are bad eggs are good okay yeah right yeah a butter weight you know margarine yeah (laughs) he ate a little of everything like you know what i mean he didn't overdo anything and now that he probably snuck in a hot dog but now that you know that's awesome yeah yeah but but not overcomplicating it like yeah if there's all these ingredients in it i don't know if i should be eating it like what are they you know look at the you know and you know what happens, Sandy, is that we overcome. Here's what I see happen, because that's why I like doing. I've done this for a long enough to see cycles and to see fads and to, and to work with patients for years and years. And you see the ones that that fail. They say fail. Like when you come when you overcomplicate it, it becomes unsustainable, and then we yeah. quit. And then what ends up happening is we say it was too hard, and that becomes our justification. And then we yeah. find ourselves taking Ozempic, right? And then, and then that's where we go, what the heck? And so don't overcomplicate this. The Absolutely. good news is, you know, God did an amazing job of making your body. He, beat, he, he beats your heart. He breathes your lungs. He doesn't ask us to do much, right? We just have to do the basics. And so I, I think you, you shoot yourself in the foot when you overcomplicate it. Are there times when you're in a serious health crisis and you need to, it needs to consume you because you got to regain your health? Yes. But like you could most, your dad. Yeah. Most people watching this, that's not the state that you're in, I hope. Okay, yeah. so then it really is just the basic, like your dad. I mean, that's the great wisdom of our, you know, generations before us, right? Just you are what you eat. Sit up straight, go to bed on time. You know, like it's just it's not that complicated. But we got all these gurus and experts out there now, right? Hawking their wares. And listen, those are a lot of those are people are my friends. I'm not knocking it. I kind of am. I love these guys. These are and there's and there's always a thread of truth in there, right? Like they're not. I'm not saying that things are selling are bad. I just mean it's become a burden. I've been doing this long enough to have seen where I used to have to try to convince people to take vitamins and now i got to try to convince people to not take so many <laughs> you know? like, there are <laughs> shelves of them yeah now i have to admit and my friends i don't want them slamming me oh sure i don't i'm sure i should i don't take any vitamins or supplements i'm yeah. very bad i eat healthy yeah i take care of myself i work yeah. out but oh. I don't take anything. And, you know, my friend's like, see, Andy, now you're a little older. You might want to consider something. So, Dr. Ben, I told him I'd ask you, should I consider something? I'll give you my answer on this, but I'm going to say this. I literally, you know, I don't know when you get like thought inspirations, right? Mine's tend to be, I tend to be in the bathroom, right? In the shower or something, all right? Mine's when I'm hiking. You're hiking? Okay. So, um, the other day, just, just Monday, I think, I was... I just, I just was getting out of the shower and I thought, you know, X amount of years ago, people didn't even think they were supposed to be taking vitamins, right? Like, like we didn't, we didn't do that as a, as a people as much. And I said, and people did pretty good. Like, like you're going to have, like, there was just a study last year in November, life expectancy is the worst it's been in decades. Life expectancy for men is down to 72. 73.2 73.2 years, I believe it is. It's like, it's, it's disgusting. Okay. It's been dropping for four years. Like, like we're doing in so many ways, we're doing more of these things than ever and we're getting worse. So I am not, I mean, I sell some supplements in my office. I have a, a, a line that I've created, but it's very basic. Right. And I tell people all the time, most of these, I don't want you to take forever. Right. Like there may be a season where I have them on some turmeric for certain things, or there may be a season I have them on, you know, collagen protein to help heal their gut because they've been living on antibiotic food forever. You know, like, so most of them are temporary to try to get them to heal because they have a deficiency. So from a deficiency standpoint, then yes, but you should be doing exactly what you're doing and what your dad did, which is eat your 
nutrition. Eat it. Like eat the food. Okay. So I don't have a problem. Now there's been some challenges that have come up where getting good, but this is just like your friend that you just said, like, oh, I don't trust the soil. So I have to have my greens powder, right? Like I would tell you, you're probably better off eating broccoli from soil you're not sure about than trying to get that all through your greens powder every day. Okay. Because there's, there's just things in that broccoli we don't understand in a good way, right? These, the way that yeah. the, that it works together and just chemicals we haven't even understood yet. So a person yeah. that doesn't take any vitamins, but eats a healthy diet, I say like, hallelujah. Like I got, I don't, I don't think you have to take supplements. Uh, there's a lot of seasons I'll go through. I won't take any supplements. The basic ones that I think uh, a person should consider is uh, good fat, some fat, omega-3s, cod liver oil, those types of things, primarily because we don't get enough of it in our diets. Okay. So we get some, but um, you know, and then you get into this, well, I can't eat the fish because the fish are poisoned and all that kind of stuff. So uh, omega-3s, there's a, there's a, there's a dearth of research on that, that I do think is solid. Um, okay. The other one that I, that I recommend on a fairly regular basis is um, some sort of collagen. Okay. Yeah. And again, these aren't vitamins like in the classic sense. This is just food. I mean, yeah. collagen is what we, you know, we need to rebuild our tissues and, and our soft tissues and ligament, you know, tendons, ligaments and lining of the stomach and all sorts of other things. And so that one is one that I recommend for a lot of people. And then I have a few other, like, again, just ones that I would recommend temporarily. But if you're yeah. like, we're not, this is what I meant earlier when I said, like, let us not just take the medical model that we all think is or not all of us maybe think, but a lot of us think is, is ridiculous or not doing what it's doing. And then don't take that mindset and just start applying that to holistic healthcare. I hate drugs. I take 38 supplements. Well, no, yeah, I agree. what, what are we doing here? So I, uh, but, but you have to be intentional about that and you gotta, you know, um, yeah. you know, make sure you are like you said, not just going to McDonald's and saying, you know, um, I don't want to take supplements. So, but I'm not a big, you know, I, so I'll finish that. You know, I work, with, I have a lot of good friends that are high end holistic doctors, right? I mean, they, you know, they're the big gurus and stuff like that. And I always give them a hard time because I'm like, you know, why is it if I want to work with you, right? It's $5,000 in testing, $10 million in supplements, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and, you know, and then and because I said, what is the average person going to do, right? Like that doesn't have, you know, that cash laying around. And, you know, we can give, if we're going to give Ozempic a hard time expecting that you need to be on this drug for the rest of your life for a thousand dollars a month. Well, I don't think that, I don't think holistic healthcare is off the hook, right? Like we should have to answer some of those same questions, right? If I, if I've built a person to become dependent on some sort of, again, supplement to be healthy, because I think it is honestly, Sandy, I think it's just as, as disempowering, right? People can become as, as feeling like they have to be reliant on their pill, their supplements as they do their, their yeah. medication. And so I don't think that's a healthy mindset either. And if you do those basics, I'll give you one quick example. Melatonin. Everybody and their dog is taking melatonin at night now, okay? Because every guru is talking about taking melatonin. Wild dreams, I know. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but here's but here you go. When you when you if we live the way we're supposed to live and we get the sunlight in the morning, the early sun comes in through our eyes without sunglasses, comes in through our eyes, affects our pineal gland which actually tells our body then to start the process of making melatonin because your body makes melatonin. And then after about 12 hours, you have enough melatonin inside of your body to actually start that process of going to bed. But what we've done is we've upside down our lives so much, right? That instead of actually doing the things that would help the body do what it's designed to do, we just say, take melatonin at eight o'clock at night. And what I'm saying is kind of like you were talking about with your own lifestyle. Let's just live within the bounds of how we're created, Right. And then yeah. you won't even find yourself needing to take all these supplements. People don't realize your body makes melatonin. People don't realize glutathione. Glutathione is a great detoxer, but your body makes glutathione out of amino acids. So people say, oh, I take my glutathione to detox. No, eat the things that your body needs to make its own glutathione and it will do it even better. And so I know these are like, these are the little like doctor parts that, you know, are nice to know or have a person on your team. Like you said, yeah. how do I find a good one? It's like, it's okay to know a guy like me, you yeah. know, so you can, yeah. you can have these conversations. But, but also once you know it, then you just integrate it and you know, you do what your dad did and you eat a little bit of everything. <laughs> By the way, you want to yeah. know what I'm pissed at? The yeah. rabbits ate my veggies last night. My oh, collard see? greens, my broccoli and my spinach. What up with that? <laughs> because they know it's good. They know it's good for them. They're smart. Have you ever heard that story? They put in a, uh, they put in like a cage. I think it was with rabbits or rats and they put in a piece of uh, like white bread you know, like wonder bread, if you will. And they wouldn't even eat it. They won't even eat it. 
Really? No. Yeah. It's that. not even, it's not even, it's not even, it's not even food, right? We're just not designed for that stuff. I'm sad. The time's up. I, I didn't <laughs> even get to, I was waiting to end it with this. Uh oh. But mm, it's, it's all right. We'll meet again. But the body was designed to heal. Yeah. And like, that's a big thing because. Yeah. Do you know who Louise Hayes is? I don't even know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So years ago, I, when I was in my 20s, I'm like, yeah. I used to say, are you sure? Is sure mm. it has to be this way? And then I came across Louise Hayes and I found all these other doctors about how your body stores this and everything else and listen and connect. Mm. And mm. it all makes sense. So I, I really do try to find and surround myself in the medical profession, the people that feel that way. And they're, they are out there. You know, most yeah. of them are physical therapist, chiropractors, whatever. Right, right. But I want to know why you picked that statement. The body was designed to heal itself and why you believe that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, it's, it's really, so when I went to chiropractic school, the, the, one of the first things you do in the training is you actually, you know, you work on cadavers, the people that have donated their body to science. So literally like the first week you're there, you are in there working on, you know, cadavers. And I remember when, and I used to, that was kind of, when I was younger, I didn't like thinking about death. I didn't like, you know, dead, like who does, but I mean, I didn't, it kind of freaked me out. And so when we told, you know, we're told we yeah, we're going to do this. I honestly was really uncomfortable, but when we opened up the, when you open up the body and I saw the design, I saw the intricacy, I saw the heart against the lungs and the vessels and the nerves and the digestion and the and I just was so I mean I'd seen pictures we've all seen pictures we all went to anatomy class we've all you know but I I hadn't seen the inside of a human body like this and it was so sacred to me it was so and I it really was like a it was really a very like divine moment in my life and I realized in that moment that doctor doesn't Doctor means, well, one of the definitions of doctor is teacher, right? And I realized in that moment, my job wasn't to really figure this whole thing out. I don't think that we can. I don't think that the created can figure out the creator. I think we're to, we're to honor it. We're to, we're to steward it. We're to care for it, right? I don't need to know everything about a plant to take care of a plant. I don't need to know everything about a car to drive the car. I need to know the basic things to be able to operate that. And so when I saw that, I just realized, how does this, how does this, this this entity of, that has a hundred trillion cells doing a hundred trillion things a second. How does it do that? How does it know how to do that? How how when I go to bed tonight, you know, will my heart keep beating <laughs> when I'm asleep and I'll keep breathing? How does it take my my lunch yesterday and make it into my eyeballs the next day? How does my how do my you know my digestive you know my inside line of my stomach is newly four days? My liver repairs itself, rebuilds itself every six weeks. Like how does this happen? Right. And it was so mind blowing to me that I first of all, that I didn't really know that and that nobody really talks about it. And because we don't, we don't have really an appreciation for it. we think more the other way. We think we're these broken, you know, designed to die, you know, not designed to heal and yeah. all the fear that is propagated with that and all those things. And so it really was this awakening. And I feel really one of my, my asser assertions is if people knew how amazing their design that so much of the fear that they have would go away. I don't have fear. I don't, I don't have fear about my body. I'm not afraid of my body. I'm not waiting for it to break down. I'm not afraid if I don't, you know, take some sort of outside chemical or, or, or injection that my immune system won't work. I'm not afraid of those things. I know that it's, uh, that it's way more powerful. Like my immune system right now that I have is way better than anything I can get from anywhere else. Doesn't mean I won't die. Doesn't mean I'm gonna, you know, that doesn't mean that. But that's where that's where it comes from for me. So I would just encourage people. You know, I wrote I wrote a book, a, a, a devotional called Design to Heal. It's a daily devotional, and it just goes through like it's it, it came out of what you just said. And so people that have read it, they're they're kind of caught off guard because I put a lot of practical advice in there because yeah. because I just said like listen, like you you need to understand your design to heal. What does that mean? Here's some amazing things for you that you probably didn't know about how the body heals. And let's, let's focus on those types of things. Now, um, so I, I just have found that most people really don't think they're designed to heal. They want a label. They want a diagnosis. They want to go to the guru doctor to tell them what's wrong with them. 
And I would say, my friends, the last thing I'll say about that. So in all human history, in all of time, all the money we've spent on science and research and all the smart, brilliant people, they've never created one single living cell. They haven't built one from scratch and said, you know, life. Okay. They didn't make some cytoplasm and make a, you know, nucleus and make a mitochondria. They didn't, they, they can't do that. I would be so bold to say that we never will because we're not supposed to, we don't need to. But in the hour that you and I have been chatting, your body that God gave you has made millions of those without you even thinking about it. Okay. And so that to me is amazing. That to me is so inspiring and empowering. You know, I, I'm assuming you're a pretty healthy person. You seem to be super vibrant. I, I don't get sick that often. I've never missed a day at the office. Um, not because I'm some sort of health guru. I think it's honestly because of honestly how I think about this, right? I'm not walking around in fear, you know, waiting to get sick and, you know, making sure I took my elderberry syrup the first time I feel the sniffles, you know, I just get on with living. And so, you know, I just, my hope and prayer for your listeners is that, yes, we talked about some, you know, tough stuff and we, you know, I rip on Ozempic a little bit and, but, but really that they would walk away being empowered, right? Yeah. That they would be in awe of their body um, and honor the body that they've been given for this, you know, brief time that we have, you know, with each other. And that perspective actually changes their physiology, right? That perspective makes you start to think about taking Absolutely. care of it, you know? So Absolutely. yeah, so you know, it's, I'm honored that you let me talk about that and that you do this show, you know, for your people, because I know they trust you and I know that they, you know, listen to you, you know, or, or the people that you bring on. So thank you for allowing me to, uh, you know, be introduced to your people. I'm so glad we met. I'm excited. I'm very excited. So yeah, we do have to go. But before we go, yeah. My let's keep it real. People want to know how they can find you. Okay. At your podcast. Where can they get your book? We need everything. We'll put it in the show notes, but I also want to hear it. Okay. I think we're, so I, I, and I'm, I don't really, I'm not good at this. So I don't, I'm not really on social or anything. My, my I think my clinic is right. So uh, Facebook uh, and Instagram designed to heal. Uh, and then the podcast is designed to heal podcast. Okay. So design, design to heal clinic is, is the, is, well, I'm going to stumble through this. So my clinic is called achieve wellness. That's my clinic in Orlando, Florida, achieve wellness. Okay. Uh, my website is achieve wellness.clinic. Our podcast is called design to heal. And we have an Instagram for that. And then okay. my, I have a personal website. That's just me, just drbenrall.com, D R B E N R A L L. Dot com and that's a place where you can buy the, you can buy the book on Amazon and everything but you can buy the book there I've written another book about wellness that you can buy there um, and then also like if there's anybody that you know I do do events like this if there's other people listening they would want me on their podcast or want me to come speak or something like that I do a lot of speaking at churches and businesses and things like that so that's really the best way to to contact me and honestly if it's okay with you I I I do this because I know it's hard for people to find good people. I actually give away my email and if people want to, um, oh. if you want to reach out to me. So my email is just my name. It's Ben Rall, B E N R A L L at Mac, M A C.com. And, um, you're not a bother. It's what I do. All right. I, it doesn't bother me when people reach out and ask me questions. I can't doctor you over the email, you know, but I can encourage you and I can share resources with you. So uh, if you have just something that came out of this, or maybe you listen to me and think I'm the craziest guy you ever heard and you want to, you know, I probably won't read your email, but you can still send me one. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> ah, uh, you're fun. You're uh, fun. There we go. And it's funny because I have a really, really amazing mentor and he just moved to Florida. And I tell people, oh, nice. oh. if you get close to me within a few years, you're going to I'm going to move to California or Florida. <laughs> Everyone that I love in the state, they move to California. That's so funny. But I'll stay in Philly. All right. There must be something about you, Sandy, that like what a, what an interesting dichotomy that, that like only people that can meet somebody like you could have those two polar kind of places, right? Move to California or move to Florida. I think that says something about you. Right, you can bring people. I swear you can bring you, the my gap. Friend, I, you know what? We we'll, we can't get into this, but yeah. a lot of my friends 
wouldn't get along because I embrace so many different people from so many walks of life, all religions, all politics. But one one thing they have in common, I feel they're very authentic and they have Mm. big hearts. Mm. No Mm. is coming from hate. Mm. And so I love it all. All right, we got to go. My Let's Keep It Real people, Dr. Ben and I would really appreciate you sharing, liking, and rating it. It means so much. And you know what I'm going to say. Until next time. Toodles. Bye, Dr. Ben. Bye-bye. Thank you.